first goal, uh, St. Patty's Day. We were playing Boston in the garden. Here's Callahan, he scores! Makes it two! I was lucky enough to score two goals that night. Good things are happening tonight! It was a special night for me. We were at his first game, opening night, he scored a goal. And I was like, oh my God, this isn't a fluke. He might be along here. I mean, he really may be able to play here. I love playing at MSG and, you know, it's uh, such a historic building to be able to, to go out there and play hockey, it's an honor. And then you stop and think about all the people that have been at the Garden. The Pope has been there, and now you say, you know what, my son was part of that. Right now we're heading to uh, my parents' house. We're gonna see, I guess, where it all started, where I grew up, and maybe grab something to eat. And the whole Rochester community has been tremendously supportive of me all the way through. You know, Kyla's family's from here. I met her in high school, so both of our families are here, and it's it's nice to come back and, and spend time with them. And the Rochester area is really nice in the summertime too, with the lake, and it's a good break to get away from the chaos of the city. It's a great hockey town. Um, you know, they have the Rochester Americans here, so you know, I went to a lot of those games, AHL games, growing up. Somebody! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so, Mom, this is everybody. Everybody, Hi. this is Mom. <laughs> Roll over. <laughs> you guys do it already. <laughs> what do I gotta do for that cookie? Why do you feel Rochester is such a good place to, to raise two boys? Well, our family's here, and I think it's important to be my family. And we had a lot of kids in the neighborhood so that you could have a lot of kids to play with and have your street hockey games. It's a big hockey community. There's a lot of options out there. You know, everybody gathers at the two rinks, and there's always you know tournaments going on and games going on. So if you want to watch hockey, there's always something going on. He started playing really young because he wanted to do it because his brother played, and then he would watch reruns on TV of the Buffalo games instead of watching Sesame Street. When you were 18 months, we put skates on you. Your muscles weren't developed enough. When you were two, you just took off. I took you for a couple lessons, and uh, you caught on pretty quick. It was a good excuse uh, to put you on the ice where I could get a cup of coffee and let you screw around with your brother. Even though me and my brother were six years apart, I didn't really look at him as my brother, but more as a friend. This is a cul-de-sac where I guess it all began. You know, me and my brother kind of beat the hell out of each other out here. Uh, once in a while the games got a little physical and one time I was behind the nets and my brother laid into me pretty good and we both actually went through the garage door. You know, we ended up laying on it and you know, my dad gets home from work and storms in the house and you know, what happened to the garage door? Playing hockey, that's what happened to the garage door. You never wanted to lose in a game. We had to let you win, especially at miniature golf, because if you didn't win, you'd have a little temper tantrum at miniature golf. <laughs> and then I think it was right around 10, 12 years old that you found something a little bit different in the way he saw the ice, uh, the passes he was making, in the way he comprehended the game. You know, for that age group, he really excelled at it. Once I hit you know, 12, 13, I realized if I wanted to be serious about it. I had to concentrate on it a little bit more. I went back to work uh, teaching <laughs> because uh, the MasterCard bills were going up very quickly because both boys were playing travel hockey. I think any parent that saw their children pursue a dream, a sports, education, you're very proud of them and you say, you know, the kid's going to be okay. I've worked hard at my job and there was a rough time when I was going through and I said, how could I quit? when I've taught him not to quit. When I was 16, 17 years old when I left, and um, you know, it'd be my first time living away from home, and you know, it was really hard to, to make that move. You leaving to go to Guelph was the hardest thing I've ever done as a mother. You talked to me in the car one day and said, Mom, you have to let me do this, you have to let me go. I have to see if I can achieve my dream. And I said, but why? I don't understand why the OHL. Why can't you go to college? And you gave me the statistics on how many players make the NHL from the OHL. So I had to let you go, but it was the hardest thing I ever did as a mother to let you go at 17. 
It's a tough decision to choose between going major junior or going, you know, the college route, but um, you know, I was really passionate about wanting to go play in Canada and you know try to pursue my dream of playing in the NHL. I was actually drafted the last round in the, in the OHL in the 15th round, and I went out to their training camp and I was lucky enough to earn a spot. You know, after that, I think I just grew, and you know, and I realized if I worked hard and you know won out every night and put out the effort, that it, that I was going to get results. Oh. There were six of us that got married. Oh, really? Me, Stahl, Hank. Crush. Yeah, uh, Christensen. When he first dated Kyla, he had no money, so he's wondering where he could take her. For our first date, he calls me up. Hey, Kai, do you want to go see a movie? And I said, no, I hate the movies. I really don't want to go to a movie. And he, he goes, okay, well, let me call you back. Calls me back a few minutes later, and he said, hey, do you want to go grab dinner? And I said, mm, actually, I just ate with my family, so I'm not really that hungry. So I said, why don't you play miniature golf? So I said, but, you know, don't have a temper tantrum. So he called me back, and he said, do you want to go play putt putt? And I said, sure, I'd love to go play putt putt golf. So he came and picked me up in his red sports car. I thought it was so cool, the stick shift. The honest truth is that I beat him and he played as hard as he could, and so did I. I mean, it was more than like one or two strokes. I let her win. I mean, let's be honest. I'm a better <laughs> miniature golfer than she is. So whatever he says, it's a lie. I had to do something to get her on a second date. <laughs> you weren't that great of an employee, to be honest. If zigzag was the, uh, the way it should have been, then things were all right. The day I got drafted and, you know, we found out I was going to the Rangers, what was that day like? I laid in bed and prayed that you would get taken on the second day and at nine o'clock uh, the phone rang. So I handed the phone over to you and then uh, you know he told you that uh, you got picked by the Rangers in the fourth. Exciting day. It, w it was crazy. The whole neighborhood went nuts if you remember that. Well, his friends came over, grandma came over, grandpa, and we just celebrated. It was a really happy day. Started your dream. When he got called up to the show the first time we expected him to stay there for a bit. Uh, he got called back to uh, Hartford, and so, you know, he was disappointed. It was hard. It was tough to go down there after playing, you know, quite a few games up. And that happened a couple times the first year. But when he got hurt the second year, and he tried to work his way through back into the lineup, and he uh, wasn't able to do it, you know, that was pretty devastating to him. You know, when I went back down, I, I said to myself, I'm going to show these guys that, you know, I could play up there and I'm going to play up there. With Avery and Hendricks in the box, and here come the Rangers, two on one. Shot score! Right now we're going to my brother's landscaping company's headquarters. That's where he keeps his trucks and his uh, equipment and things like that. See if he allows me back on a more after all, <laughs> after all these years. <laughs> What's going on? Not much. Good see you. Good seeing you. Back to the old stomping ground, huh? Yep. You know, this being my first job with you, what kind of an employee was I? You weren't that great of an employee, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get a new mower, Mike. Ryan's first day on the job, uh, we went to cut a lawn, and uh, after about 10, 15 minutes on the job, it was just an absolute disaster. So, being the little brother, I sent him back to the truck to uh, learn his lesson. Couldn't give me a good one? If zigzag was the, uh, the way it should have been, then things were all right. But to be truthfully honest, after a couple years in Guelph, Ryan matured a lot and came back and uh, helped me in some really tight times. What kind of brother was I growing up? Oh, you're a good younger brother. Always uh, basically my little shadow, chasing me around the house in the ice rink. Always getting fights, you know, sticking up for yourself and always, uh, you know, try to beat me in street hockey. You know, he's kind of the, the main reason why I strapped the skates on. I used to uh, put them out in the cul-de-sac and rollerblades and run them through the drills and the motions. I was always getting knocked down and if I stayed down there, just going to keep moving on without me, so I had to get back up. Initially in his game, he was more of a finesse player. A real fast, obviously when he started hitting, um, Ryan took a real liking to the physical play. So at that point I knew what Dad was talking about, be nice to your little brother because eventually he's going to be a little bit bigger. You know, I've made it to the pros and now I play for the Rangers. You know, what did that feel like to watch me through that journey? Put all your eggs in one basket. You can see it on the ice today. When you put something in your sights, you always get it. Actually, I kind of look up to him as basically my older brother at this point too. 
Right now we're on our way to the Brook House, my favorite restaurant in Rochester, nice Italian spot. I like dropping your name out, Brian, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of fun, and we all of a sudden the New York Ranger, I love yeah. that. time I was just concentrating on the season I was having and you know trying to do good for the Rangers and then I get the call to go represent my country. You know the Olympic experience was awesome. I was able to have my family there to share it with me and to represent the USA in such a prestigious tournament. It was one of my proudest hockey moments. When he was at the Olympics it was just oh my god he's at the Olympics. This is just incredible. I, I never imagined that would happen at all. <laughs> I think the first reaction I had was shock. Never anticipated that you'd be an Olympian. <laughs> Proud of you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> We're here at uh, Locker Room Sports. I spent a lot of time here as a kid. Uh, they set me for my first uh, gear, and you know they did all my skate sharpening, bought a lot of sticks here. So why don't we go inside and, and say hello? Our roots are in hockey. I got started with a hockey pro shop back in 77, so we've been at it for uh, quite some time. Okay, they always had a hockey game on TV here, so it's a place where we all gathered, and you know, no better place to do it than you know, around all this gear. This might be a little small for me, but... <laughs> I think with equipment, it's just about how comfortable you are in it. When you put that helmet on a hockey player, it's time to play. It's an exciting time as a young kid to be able to come in here and, and get the new stuff. Obviously, it's an expensive sport, hockey, and you know, with some payment plans and, and things like that, and cutting us deals when they could, it was awfully kind of them to, to do that, really not knowing us too well. You know, without that sport, I don't know if my family could afford to put me through hockey. I can still remember down in the hockey room downstairs, Ryan's dad came in to get him outfitted, and we said, yeah, you're all set now. And we tried to take the equipment off him, and uh, Ryan goes, no. So he comes running up the stairs, sees his brother Mike, goes running in. <laughs> Hits him like that, and Steve and I look at each other and go, I think he's ready for hockey. <laughs> each stick has a different curve from an NHL player, and I always like to use the, the Shanahan curve. You know, I still use a, a variation of that today. Next is how light it is, and the weight of it, and the flexibility of it. Yeah, it's kind of surreal. Um, you know, I come here as a kid and, you know, look up to these guys and admire these guys whose jerseys are in here and now to be able to walk in here and see my own. And I don't think you ever get used to it. You know, you see somebody wearing your jersey or you see it hanging in the window. Um, you almost feel like it shouldn't be there. Thanks for having us. I appreciate everything, uh, you know, you've done for me for over the years. And, and uh, thanks for letting us show us the place and, you know, we had a great time. I have a lot of good memories in this place. Right now we're on our way to the Brook House, a nice Italian spot, and one of the only spots you get authentic homemade Italian food here in Rochester. We are here at the Brook House, one of my favorite spots in Rochester to come eat. As you walk into the Brook House here, you can see all the autographs and the, and the pictures. And you know, not too long ago, I was lucky enough to make the Wall of Fame. They got me right back there behind the cash register, and it's prime real estate on the wall. And you know, I'm lucky to have it. All right, uh, this is Red Fideli. Are you ready to tell us a little bit about the the place and how you started? We started 36 years ago. I got my seven kids who work here. They're not the Brady bunch, but we get along pretty well. They're all still here. Nobody's left. <laughs> He's an unbelievable guy. He's real personable. He's, you know, he's always there. He knows about you. He welcomes you into his restaurants. We've made a lot of friends there, and you know that we've done well here in Greece. You come in, and they know you by name. I like dropping your name out, Brian, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun. And we all of a sudden, the New York Ranger. I love yeah. that. <laughs> We're proud of you guys. I mean, I tell you what a trip it is for us here in Rochester just to squeeze out the, the box scores and see if, if O'Callaghan or Junta scored any goals or assists, anything. Yeah. Even the fights, we like. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that always tickles me is that, I don't know if it's a, a, the Italian ethnic thing or what it is, but we're kissing people. Every now and then, 
we get this area where people come in where there's a girl or guy. We have no gender. And I remember the first time I went, tried to kiss him, he got a little nervous. <laughs> no, I'm still getting used to the kissing. That surprised me the first time, and I'm still trying to get used to it. But now he's at, at ease with me when I get no, like okay, yeah, I got The girls you. are easy, but the guys, then they get a little nervous when I do that. Yeah. My mom's Italian. Uh, my dad's Irish. You know, we had the kissing on my mom's side of the family, not so much on my dad's. At the end, it's always, always family. Some pair of familia, even when we want to choke them. <laughs> Do you have any idea that you know there was a chance for me to develop into the player I am now and becoming a ranger? When you start talking about those kinds of things, you say, they're terrific, but it's a long way to the majors. And when it happens, it's like an A-bomb hit. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, those are great accomplishments. Favorite thing would have to be the chicken parm. Uh, I'm a huge chicken parm fan, and uh, so far this is the best I've had. So I have a pregame ritual where I have to have my chicken parm before every game, and you know I haven't found one in New York, I guess, that has lived up to the chicken parm here at Reds, but thank you for, for everything you've done for me for over the years and giving me a good place to share memories with my family. Your family's holding the fort down pretty good without them. When you're away, they, they make their, yeah. their appearances very often. They and, better um, be. <laughs> and I'm glad that, uh, that you haven't found any place better now. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell the New Yorkers, though. I'll tell them. <laughs> <laughs>、like、school. That was a big,、uh, big thing for me. I had the greased up hair and the baggy jeans, and I thought I ruled the school. The biggest difference between Rochester and New York, I guess, obviously, is just the size of the city and you know, how much is going on and you know, the activity. I did worry because it's such a big city, I thought. But once I went and saw where he was living and visited him, I wasn't worried anymore. It's so much fun going to New York City and watching play. I think I blend into the crowd pretty well, but you know, every once in a while, you get somebody who passes you, recognizes you. They just, you know, say hi to you, keep on walking, or you know, thank you for the job you're doing. That's one thing I like about New York is how you can blend in with the crowd and do your own thing. When we go to the city, we do a lot of fun things, but so, a lot of times we sit. In his apartment with him because we just want to have quality time with him. You know, just relax, have a beer, and just enjoy Ryan and Kai. We're on our way to our boat. Give him a boat keys. Well, you guys get to experience a true boat trip. We forgot the boat keys. Is there a set in the boat? Let me go check. We're gonna take a look at Rochester from、uh, the water. I'm here with my wife and my buddy Jeff. We'd like to come down here in the summertime and, and just chill out. And you know, if the lake is too rough, we'll just cruise up and down the river and, and get some rays. Me and、uh, Jeff met in high school. We had a technology class together, I think was the, the first time we met. I didn't pick the class. I'm sure he didn't pick the class either. Somebody picked it for us, and I'm looking around and You know, trying to figure out who I'm going to talk to and stuff. And I look across and I'm like, he's、oh, got the slick back hair. <laughs> I had the greased up hair and、uh, <laughs> the baggy jeans. And, you know, I, I thought I ruled the school. <laughs> Nothing I could say more than, you know, he's just been one of the best friends you know, a guy could have. We first met in high school.、Uh, we were mutual friends for a while. We started dating in May, and September came and he left. Things were going tough, and my first time moving away from home, you know, I'd always be able to call her and talk to her、yeah. about things. I used to drive up with his dad three hours every Friday night to the golf game. We'd watch his game, we'd see him for like five, ten minutes afterwards, maybe do a quick dinner at Subway, get home maybe like three o'clock in the morning, and, and that was it for a good year. My time in Hartford, it was, it was tough. I was getting sent you know, up and down, up and down. And you know, every time I got sent down, you know, she was there to, to support me and she understood what I was going through. Well, my job is to keep a positive attitude all the time, no matter what. It's big for me when I come home after a bad game. You're positive with me and you, you、yeah. tell me it's going to be okay. And it helps me out. You know,、yeah. I know that and I'm happy you do it. I try my best. I think I do okay. Every time I went up to see him in Hartford, he got called up to the Rangers. Every time. So I'd see him for like two days and he'd get called up and I'd have to come home. And when you were done with college, you came up and, and、uh, I finally popped the question. This is the story of how we got engaged. It was right before the Olympics. 
Brian said, you know what, I wanna plan Valentine's Day this year. So I said, okay, fine. So he's at practice and I get a bouquet of roses with a little note on it that said, be ready, a car's gonna pick us up at 5.30 and we pull up to Rockefeller Center and it was the first time that we had been officially ice skating together because he ice skates for a living so why would he want to do it leisurely, right? So we drive down to Del Posto. He had rented out the wine cellar downstairs. Ryan's only taking like a little bite of this and that and then after the plates get cleared, he asked me to marry him. I was like so in shock because he's down on the ground on one knee and he asked me to marry him and I was just like, Oh my God. And then he's like, is it a yes? And I said, yes. And then he's like, I'm starving. I wish I didn't send my steak away because I couldn't eat any of it because I was so nervous. So it was a long road and a tough road, but at the same time, I still have to concentrate on staying here now and you know, continuing my success as a, as a New York Ranger. When I watch you at home on television and you fight, or hit someone, I jump around. Is he hurt? Is he hurt? Usually okay? Yeah, usually you're right. <laughs> well, everybody refused to sit next to my dad during games. If I wasn't scoring or the game wasn't going correctly, he let it know. We called it his game face, and we stayed pretty much clear of him until <laughs> the game was over. I think it's all a fallacy, Kelly. The fact is, a lot of people like to sit next to me because they like to hear my commentary on how you're playing. You're not moving a puck. You don't really take the shot that's appropriate. And a lot of times, there's people open, and you gotta get your head up and look. <laughs> you know? I try to throw my body around as best I can. At the same time, I think I can you know, put the puck in the net for the team, and you know, I think I developed into a pretty good two-way forward. Short by Callahan, he scores! To be honest with you, seeing five or six Callahan jerseys walking down the aisle, going into the game, seeing him up on the Jumbotron for warm-up. It uh, kind of just gives you a, a tickle. He looks pretty good in the jersey. I want to bring a cup to New York, and that's uh, my main goal now. You know, we can be raising the cup and, uh, on the garden ice. A lot of people ask me at work, you know, how's it feel to be the father of a New York Ranger and uh, Olympian? You know, I tell them the truth. I don't know how that feels. I don't look at them like that. Ryan's right. I love New York and it's a place that I want to play for the rest of my career and you know I don't want to go anywhere else. He wants to be the guy that makes the difference.